guys, you are watching Blogovision. I'm Tatiana Spiteri, your Eurovision critic, music journalist, and most recently the commentator on Ace Law, the Estonian national selection for Eurovision. Welcome, welcome to my channel. And today we are looking at the submission of Malta to Eurovision. Malta has just finished their three and a half hour stream of Malta Eurovision Song Contest. And surprise, surprise, no, really huge surprise is that we've got Sara Bonici representing Malta this year. All of a sudden, not even top three in the betting odds, not even a favorite favorite to win, like not even close. It was as we thought between Ryan Healy Matt Black and uh, Erban, but uh, it is Sara and what has conquered the hearts of the public. It's still a bit of a mystery to me how cards turned, you know, <laughs> around. Uh, let's re-watch her national selection performance because I need to put my thoughts together and uh, analyze what has really happened, how she managed to win in jury, first of all, by the public opinion it was Matt Black and Banana. Chiki chiki taki taki woo woo mela mela Matt won the televotes, while um, the winner of the um, jury was clearly, clearly Sara Bonici. It was one after the other jury. Uh, Bonici, 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 Sara Bonici. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, loop, 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 loop. On a loop, you know, on repeat. Was it a good choice or not? Let's rewatch. Let's predict where Sara Bonici is going to land in Eurovision in Malmö 2024 in Sweden. <laughs> an effective kind of start. Um, <laughs> a bit subdued, uh, kind of me at the beginning, but uh, our girls got, you know, a good voice, a very nice voice. She's a sweetheart, you know, you can see from, oh my god, this dancer support. I'm a dancer myself for 12 years now, been <laughs> dancing non-stop. This is a nice hold and she's keeping keeping her pitch, keeping every note. Awesome. Gaga, ga, ga. what was that? Lady Gaga? Lady Gaga. Ga. <laughs> um, like the sharpness of her moves, definitely. Super cute girl, very young and very just unspoiled, you know what I mean? <laughs> Your vision likes such kind of stuff. Uh -huh, we've got a bit of slow-mo <laughs> technique on stage. My attention. I'm probably missing a little bit of the strength of the vocals. Nice salto, by the way. Mm. It definitely needs more colors on the Eurovision stage. All in black is kind of, you know, most of uh, some national selections this year are happening in the color black. And that's not too bright and optimistic. Uh-huh, nice dance part. Okay, yes, bending. De definitely a copy of slow-mo move where <laughs> Chanel leans on her dancers like that. Song-wise, Ah, lovely blindfold and turnover. Oh my god, Salto. <laughs> if that can be, yeah. Oh, well, that is a copycat of Israel movements. Um, I'm sorry, but uh, Unicorn uh, <laughs> has probably you know, left such a strong uh, fingerprint on everyone, you know, on every national selection that even here we've got the moves from uh, Noe Kerel. Uh, well, Kalisha was a bit at fault here, but, uh, you know. A lot of accents, but it's very retro sounding, guys. Um, as much as I like the song, you know, I like the song, I like the chorus, I like the pre-choruses, I like the energy, definitely. Um, however, it's super sweet, you know what I mean? Like uh, sugar, <laughs> sweet. Um, uh -huh. She's trying to look like very much like I'm a wow, kind of a devil, devil of a woman, but uh, <laughs> she looks too sweet to produce that impression. <laughs> Loved her ending kind of move. Push that man away. Um, 
Okay, uh, more to serious analysis. Now, how will this do in Eurovision? It's definitely not a bad song, you know, I mean, it's melodic, it's nice to listen to. I think it grows on you. Tell me if you think I'm right, yeah, and if the song grew on you, if you heard it several times, it's a grower. Uh, the problem with Eurovision is you only have like three minutes to grow into the hearts of most people. Is this a qualification for Malta? It might be, because Malta is in the second semi-final and we've just learned that uh, in, the, um, in this allocation of uh, singers in the first and second semi-final, the second semi will be a bit weaker, according to you know uh, the blog other bloggers and uh, the songs we have already. Uh, so it might be that Malta has uh, what it takes to at least make it to the final. Um, yes, guys, I am brutal. I am not always so optimistic as to ah, Valletta 2025. Ah, Valletta made the right choice and will win Eurovision. Um, I would say with none of the songs in top four or five of this uh, Malta Eurovision Song Contest, none of them would have uh, won it for Malta this time. But it's also about having a good time, you know, having a good time and uh, producing a nice impression, you know, on the public. I just wish probably that uh, Malta was riskier with their choices. Uh, jury played it safe, I'm afraid. Uh, people wanted to be a little more uh, mijnun, <laughs> a little bit more like another kind of crazy attitude. And again, it didn't happen for Matt. Last year he was the jury's winner, this, this time he was the televoters winner, and none of them he won. Like, um, you know, somebody said that he can come back next year and finally get his crown. This is a nice, um, nice, you know, the key word here, guys, is nice, you know. Nice is um, like all right for Eurovision, but nice is not uh, making me sort of vote for a certain artist. Nice is not going to make uh, 200 million people watching Eurovision uh, like go, oh my god, you know. Potential qualifier, yes. Could it not qualify? Yes. <laughs> However, considering we don't have jury voting in the semi-finals from now on, this has more chances to land in the final, on, in the grand final of Eurovision. If it does, where is it in the final? I'm thinking not high, not high. This is not more overpowering than uh, Chameleon, I think. Come on, Chameleon! Dun, 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 dun. Where did it land? In the bottom. Will it be like bottom five? Actually, not top, not bottom three for sure, if it qualifies for the final. Will it be top ten? No, no. I don't see it in top 10. Um, not that I'm saying it's impossible, everything is possible with the right stage in Eurovision. Uh, but the song has to, you know, has to captivate you. The song has to keep you from second one. Uh, the performance here for a moment keeps you from second one to second <laughs> 180. That's three minutes. Uh, but uh, song wise, this is not something that uh, will be, you know, getting all jury votes and uh, public votes. Uh, however, I think this is something super interesting that has just happened. I mean, I'm still trying to <laughs> to subdue my emotions about like what has just happened because, you know, 50% of votes were for Matt, 17, 18 for Ryan Healy, another, you know, 15 or so for uh, Erba, and we kind of saw the top three coming. None of us really saw Sarah winning it, like, you know, there is, you know, we love Eurovision for this, we love Eurovision for kind of unpredictability, we'll, oh, because there's too much predictable outcome in Eurovision lately. I'm super curious to see what what happens at uh, on the stage of uh, Malmö in Sweden, you know, because something like this is uh, extraordinary that no one can predict even uh, the winner, you know, of uh, Multi Eurovision Song Contest uh, and the top three is sort of upside down, like... Uh, well, that is all that I have to say for now, guys. I wish you all to uh, eat your bananas, uh, to eat your salad, to eat whatever makes you happy, get your hormones of happiness. And uh, if uh, that is Loop, the song that makes you happiest, put it on repeat. See you guys in my next reaction video. Bye!